You know, with the passing of years, we often become more and more conscious of our own mortality. The reality of death all around us is something that we don't like to consider, but it's something that one day every single one of us will experience. The reality that we have attended funeral services, the reality that we have sat maybe in a hospital bed beside a loved one, is something that reminds us of the great reality of the brevity of life. Now the Bible says we are to be ready to meet the Saviour. The Word of God says we're to prepare to meet God. And it may be that you're listening in today and maybe you're suddenly because of circumstances, maybe even a diagnosis, you've become very conscious of your own mortality. That certainly life is very short and it will ultimately for every single one of us come to an end. We tend to bury our heads in the sand about this reality. I believe that there's a conspiracy of silence about death. Nobody likes to be morbid. Nobody likes to think about these things. But the reality is that soon we will be leaving this world and going out into the great eternity. And there's certainly a fear whenever it comes to thinking about death. The Bible speaks about the king of terrors. And some people have described death as being the king of terrors and also the terror of kings. The human mortality rate is 100%. Death is the most democratic thing in all the world. And maybe you're listening in today and you've recently been confronted with your own mortality. And that causes you to be tremendously afraid. It causes you to be worried. It causes you to be concerned. Uh, there's a certain uncertainty about death. We only get to experience it uh, in a physical sense once. And how are we to prepare for it? What are we to expect? Well, throughout the Word of God, we have many men and women who loved the Lord, who were very conscious of the brevity of life, the reality of death, and the certainty of eternity. And Psalm 90 speaks about this at length. We read these words in Psalm 90, verse number 9. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath, we spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten, and if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labour and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. Teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. And the psalmist there realises with the reality that death is something that might even be imminent for him, he needs to be wise. And how can we be wise? How can we be confident in the midst of a world where we're confronted every day with the reality of our own mortality? How can we be wise? Well, first of all, we have to recognise that, yes, death for every single one of us is a reality. The old must die, but even the young may die. How can we be ready for death? How can we face death with courage, with assurance, and with conviction? Well, we need to realize that, yes, death is a reality, but we also need to realize what death is. The Bible says that death is whenever the soul leaves the body. The real you, the principle of life, the personality, the soul within the body, the body that we live in is just a a house, if you like, an earthly tabernacle. It's like a tent. It just houses the real individual. And whenever we die, the soul leaves the body. The body dies, but the soul lives on. And so death ushers us out into eternity. And so we need to think about death in those terms that yes, it's a reality, it's a certainty, it's something that might come unexpectedly. But whenever we die, we leave this scene of time and the soul goes out into eternity to meet God. And for all eternity, it's either heaven or hell. And that's one of the reasons why people are afraid of death, because somehow we know in our hearts that there's a great eternity out there to face. The Bible says that God has put the world or God has put eternity within our hearts. We somehow know that we're spiritual beings. We somehow know that there's something after, there's an uncertainty with death. But yet the Lord Jesus Christ in all things, and that's important to note, in all things he not only has the answer, but Christ is the answer. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He also declared, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, 
yet shall he live. And it's so important to realize that we need Christ not just to die, not just to get to heaven, but we also need Christ in order to really live life in all of its fullness. And whenever you realize that the Son of God died upon that cross and shed his blood, as the Bible says, God gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We can face death with assurance and with certainty, uh, knowing that the Lord is faithful and he keeps the souls of those who trust in him and repent of their sin. And you can face death, therefore, with assurance and with certainty if your faith is in Christ and you've trusted him as your saviour. And then you begin to live for him. The hymn writer said about labouring for treasures of worth, air toil ends at the close of the day, living in light of eternity, living for the things that really matter. And that's really our whole purpose in life. We can't really afford to die if we haven't lived for Christ and we haven't given our hearts and lives to him. And maybe as we think about these things, puts it all into perspective that someday we're going to stand and give an account before God about what we have done with Christ and what we have done for Christ. And the child of God who lives for the Saviour has the assurance that one day they will hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Just in closing, the Bible speaks about Lazarus. Luke chapter 16, the rich man and Lazarus. Different lives, different eternities, but they both experienced death. The rich man wasn't ready. He went to a lost eternity. But Lazarus loved the Lord. And the Bible says whenever the beggar died, he was carried by the angels in the Abram's bosom, which was a Jewish expression for paradise. And the Lord saw to it that Lazarus did not die alone, but the very angels of the Lord escorted him into, the, into paradise, into heaven. And we have that wonderful assurance as Christians, having trusted Christ as our Saviour, being born again of the Spirit of God, that the root of the matter is in us. We've got eternal life. What's done for the Lord and time is never lost. He rewards his own. We can face death with assurance and the Lord will carry us by the angels in his immediate presence. I trust that these words will encourage you and comfort you and hopefully we'll see you again very soon. God bless you, friends. Thanks for listening.